Cats from Queensland, Kathmandu. I'm gonna make my cousin a, one of those, you know, <laughs> uh, one of those, a collar, a dicky. I don't, I don't know. They're basically like a turtleneck with a little bit of fabric that you put under your coat. Little tiny baby swatch, and I think that's gonna be a fine fabric for on US sevens for the this portion. I'll go down for the collar portion, but you know. It's pretty. It's a splurge yarn and then a sweater's quantity. This would be a lot more than I would ever spend on a sweater's quantity of something. But it's a nice yarn for gifting because it's merino silk cashmere. But I only need one skein. So it's a $25 gift, which I find to be appropriate for the person who's getting it. And also you can say it's got some cashmere in there. Fancy schmancy. thinking about how to do the increases because I wanted sort of a saddle shouldery kind of thing. I wanted to leave some of the ribbing and then have more ribbing cascading down out of it. And I was thinking about how I wanted to do that and I was going to basically rip off a saddle shoulder and do increases every row. And I sat there thinking and I was like, well, if I do one row and then leave one row and then do another one with a make one and then I can do the next and an error and one knit front and back so I get that purl stitch and then do a make one on the next row and then I won't be stretching out and, and, and basically long story boring I was totally overcomplicating it I did what is there's a reason that some things are the way you do things because if you do on one row make one left or in my case the left lifted and then in the other uh, right lifted then the stitch, they balance each other out. So you don't, so yeah, the stitch will be a little bit enlarged, but it's kind of pretty, I like it. Um, and in this case, it didn't actually get enlarged, so that's interesting, but sometimes the easy solution is, is the best solution. That's all I'm saying.
checking in on my progress, which I'm pretty happy with. I'm really happy with the way the increases look. And the fabric is nice, and everything's going pretty much as I was hoping it would. I only had to redo the increases once to figure out the best way to go. And then there's my socks that I have to mend that I keep putting in front of my face, hoping that they'll annoy me and I'll fix them. It's totally not working. But, you know, you never know. And here we have my freezer, which is currently storing a sweater. That was really pretty yarn, and I couldn't help it. So I bought it, and it's in the freezer, and hopefully that will kill any friends it might have decided to bring along. Can you believe the halo on that? Look at that. That is Bubble Link Coopworth breed specific yarn, and it's freaking gorgeous. I made some socks out of it, because, you know, I had to. I also made socks, just vanilla socks, out of that Knit Pro Symphony Terra. I think they're kind of cool. Plain old vanilla socks. But they're really cozy, and I think they're going to last. I really do like whatever mm, universe of superwash this is. I think it's kind of cool. So this is new. This is by Zupf. That's fun to say. I don't know if that's how you say it, but it's fun to say, so I'm going to keep doing it. Zupf by Midori Hirose. The of Ranunculus fame, and I've never knitted a Ranunculus, but I've knit a bunch of her other patterns, and I love every single one because the construction is so clever. The fit is spectacular. I mean, it's gargantuous, but like, it's gargantuous in the right way. See what I'm saying? I mean, Like, come on, it's fantastic. You know, I mean, you can't wear a jacket. <laughs> it's definitely not gussets, <laughs> but look at the detail. I mean, that's, it goes all the way through, even though you're picking up for the sleeves, but the braid continues. So I love this sweater. Do you notice anything weird about this sweater? Anything at all? One of the sleeves is an inch bigger than the other. You can probably tell now that I've told you, but you know, you can't tell unless I tell you. I, when I wrote down my notes, I, I did something different on the first sleeve and I'm not really gonna tell you what because I don't wanna get away with the pattern, but I, I took the wrong note and I made the wrong assumption when I knit the second sleeve, so I ended up with four more stitches on this sleeve and then I was like well I think I like the smaller sleeve better but I don't know why I think that so why don't I live with both of them and see if I change my mind and it turns out I like the bigger sleeve better so I learned a fun lesson <laughs> the yarn is Briggs and Little Regal which is a two-ply worsted weight in the colorway copper which depending on how the light hits, it changes, which I can't even, is spectacular. It is rustic, but it is soft. It is not prickly. It's simply not soft. It's not the opposite of soft. It's simply not, like in the grand scheme, here's, you know, superwash merino, soft and marshmallowy. It's like here, and, and up here is, is something that's hairy and, you know, some of the lopy colors, the olifus lopy colors that are sort of very sheepy. It's, it's, it's over here. It's not not soft. It's soft. But it's not soft, soft. I need to figure out a language for that. How do we... <laughs> a softness scale, but it's rustic, so... Doesn't matter. All that matters is I wear this thing. Like now, it's replaced my people as my go-to. I need to get dressed today, and I don't know what to wear, <laughs> or I don't want to think about what I want to wear because I don't. I'm lazy. 
I I'm lazy and I like having outfits that I love, so I just put myself into one of them and then I walk out the door and I don't have to think about it. Because there's a lot of other things to think about. Do you have any idea how many times I'm in the lights and the... And, the <laughs> and I filmed this once already and the camera didn't autofocus on me, it autofocused behind me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so here we go again, but it doesn't matter. It's all fun and games. So yeah, brand new sweater. Love it. Highly recommended. Um, I, I accidentally modified the pattern. I didn't intend to. I was going to need a medium. There's three sizes, extra small, small, medium, large, and then a larger size than that. I can't remember what it's called, which fits an incredibly broad range. I do look at the project pages because this thing is flattering on everybody. Like everybody looks really good in this sweater. I don't know why. I think it's the, I think it's the this sort of, it sits on your hips, but then you get the extra sort of thing that definitely is nice. Um, but I also think it's the way that it lays in front, the, the proportions, something about it. Other thing worth noting about the sweater, why am I talking so fast? Nobody knows. Um, Cause I want to see if it's auto focusing <laughs> in case I have to do it again. That's why I'm talking this fast. Enhance your calm, John Spartan. Other thing to note about this pattern is that it sits exactly where it's supposed to. I can, I'm not gonna do a cartwheel. I thought it would be crazy. I'm also indoors and there's a chair like right there. That would hurt. But I could do cartwheels in this thing and I would get up and this, the, this would stay back on my shoulders. How does she do that? I have no idea. I just know that she does. And it's, she's really good at that. So, was that the other thing I wanted to say about this? I can't remember. Just three thumbs up. I need an extra one because it's really that good. This pleases me so greatly. I don't know why. Look at that, it's just standing up. There's nothing in the middle. I love rustic yarns. The other thing I love about rustic yarns is that I can spit join. So I knit the back so that it was long enough to sit under a jacket, but no longer, cut the yarn, continued to work on the front until it was a length that I liked, and then I could just spit join back in and continue making the back and go until I ran out of yarn. So if I am winging it, which is most of the time, I don't have to worry about using enough. I can just go where I want. Let's see, can I see that? Yeah, I really like that. I think that came out beautifully. So, yeah, getting close. The other thing I did that I'm really happy I did is that I measured out when I did the, when I did the back part, I bound off, even though I knew I was gonna rip it back or figured I would rip it back, I bound off anyway using the bind off I intended to use, which was once again, the Russian. And that way, when I ripped it back, I measured it and it was three lengths from the center of my chest holding my arm out. And so now when I finish this, I know exactly how much yarn I need. I don't have to play yarn chicken, which is always fun. I went to the farmer's market and I went to buy vegetables because that's what I go to farmer's markets for. Only this farmer's market was like part farmer's market, part craft fair. Which, I mean, is not the end of the world. It was annoying because I didn't get many vegetables. But, 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 I did find some yarn and it's pretty special. I was talking to a lovely gentleman and they have an Angora farm, which confuses me now that I'm saying it out loud because I thought Angora was rabbit, but these were goats. So now I'm gonna to have to do some Googling. Will I do that right now? Probably not. No, I gotta know. Ah, it's both. There's Angora goats and Angora rabbits, which is... <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> that is one seriously cool goat. It's actually the Ankara, 
which is a, a, a place in Turkey, if I remember correctly. It's the name of a city, but it's also the name of the breed of the sheep. She not sheep, goat. Oh! <laughs> With the black and the... Oh, that is hysterical. Wow, that's really... Those are awesome goats. See... Yeah, this, this guy, he's like, he's, he's like the, the weird version of St. Nicholas. Anyway, um, so that, now I understand. They, they're both. <laughs> anyway, he has an Angora goat farm. And usually they will just sell the fleece. They don't typically spin yarn, but they decided to try it once. And that happens to be when I showed up. So you know I, I mean how do you not how, how do you not say yes when the universe puts something like that in your path and so this is from a local Angora goat farmer 80% mohair or 80% yeah because it said 80% mohair and I always thought mohair was a specific kind of goat so now I gotta check again this is going to be a lot of editing. It's the same thing. That's what? If I Google mohair goat, mohair is the wool that comes from the hair of the Angora goat. So all mohair is Angora. Is that it? Yep. Yep. Okay, so, Angora Hill Farm, lovely gentleman, chatted for, with him for a little while, 80% mohair, 20% wool. I got the load on and what a pain in the neck it was to get that happening. Um, I'm reasonably sure this is worsted spun, all the fibers going in the same direction because of, just because of the way that it looks. It appears to be a two-ply. I don't know. It, this is, obviously, this is incredibly soft. It's 80% mohair. But it's also, and it's undyed. So this is, this is, you know, George, or whatever the goat's name was. And he had a whole basket of this, and he had a whole basket more. Um, and I guess there's not a lot of knitters in the area, because <laughs> he seemed to be having a hard time getting rid of it. Uh, it is. It was $20 for a skein. It's about 78 grams and about 200 yards. I don't I mean, I haven't obviously even wound this up, let alone swatched with it because, because I just want to get it grubby by petting it. <laughs> I don't know. Because I just, I just, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, so I think I'm going to leave it in the thing. I initially thought it would be beautiful with the undyed BFL, and visually it is. I could probably hold two strands of this with one strand of this, um, or possibly just do single strand, depending. I decided against it because the softness is, this is super soft, in a different way than this is super soft. This is Angora. This is, it is like petting a bunny, which is probably why it's slightly confusing. I don't know that I've ever pet a goat, I don't know. That, I'm sure I did when I was a kid. No, you don't, you didn't really pet them. You sort of played with them or you fed them. I mean, they're funny creatures. They do interesting things, but not so much in the. You know, I don't know. Maybe you do. And this is also soft, but this is soft in a. This is soft in a way that involves straw. There's a dry softness to this, whereas there's. a silken softness to this. So if I did mittens, which would be the only thing that I would want to do color work on and occasionally wear, like special occasion mittens, is, is that a thing? <laughs> it's, it's for the really good snowball fights, I don't know. But then, because this would be stranded all the way around, I, on the inside, wouldn't feel this. And I really want to, I want this, this next to skin. I also want this next to skin, but I don't think that they're together. What am I gonna do with them? I have no idea. I have no idea. But that's okay, because 
Uh, I will be honest, at the moment, this is the entirety of my stash. <laughs> and some leftovers. I always have, you know, a bag of leftovers that are on their way to either becoming something or what have you, but th these are the only, this, this is it. So I, I don't feel like my stash is overwhelming. <laughs> I don't know. It was really cool. It was very cool. And I will try to find... He he gave me his info. I don't think there was a website on it, but I'll do some Googling. And if I can find a website, it'll be in the doobly-doo down below. And you can go check it out and maybe get some because they're really nice people. And this is incredible. This is a really special...